How we care for our lawns directly impacts the quality of our water, both the water we drink and the water in our rivers, lakes, and streams. Herbicides can harm the environment if not applied properly. If they are not absorbed into the ground, they may wash off your lawn and into the storm drain, ending up in our rivers, lakes, and streams. And some may also end up in our groundwater. Herbicides can harm the environment if not used properly. In this video, which is the third in the series, you'll learn when and how to control weeds to boost the quality of your lawn and protect our waters. In this video, you will learn how to control weeds by strengthening your lawn through basic lawn care practices and fertilizing according to your lawn's needs. You will learn why it is okay to have some weeds in your yard. You will learn when you may want to consider alternatives to grass. You will learn how to remove weeds without using herbicides. You will learn when and how to use herbicides responsibly and effectively. Once you have learned these concepts, you will be well on your way to having a healthy lawn that is also better for the environment. The best way to control weeds is to grow a thick and healthy stand of grass that doesn't leave room for weeds. Generally, the best defense against weeds would be a healthy lawn situation. In this case, we have several weeds because we lost a lot of our grass over the winter. In the case over there with the Kentucky bluegrass and the fine fescues that are really dense, you can see there's no weeds in those situations because density is the most important factor for outcompeting weeds. You can strengthen your grass by practicing good lawn care techniques. In the first video in this series, Lawn Care Basics, you learn some simple steps you can take to achieve a healthy lawn that is also good for the environment. Let's first review these steps. Practice proper mowing habits such as mowing at about three inches height, not cutting more than one third of the grass blade off each time, using a sharp mower blade, and leaving the grass clippings on the lawn. Aerate in the fall to give roots room to grow and improve water infiltration. Allow grass to go dormant in summer. If you choose to water, water deep and infrequently in the spring and fall, and shallow and more frequently in the summer to match root depth. For more information about basic lawn care, watch Lawn Care Basics at mwmo.org. In the second video in this series, Fertilizing Your Lawn, you learn how to use fertilizer to help strengthen your lawn while reducing its impact on the environment. Let's first review these steps. Find out what your lawn needs by getting your soil tested. Choose the right fertilizer based on your soil test. Calculate how much to use and apply according to the instructions on the bag. Generally, your lawn can get by with one application per year applied in the fall. For more information about fertilizing, watch Fertilizing Your Lawn at mwmo.org. Next, consider tolerating a few weeds. Within a thick and healthy lawn, weeds do not harm the environment, but herbicides can. It takes a lot of herbicide to have a weed-free lawn. Minimize your use of herbicides by tolerating a few weeds. Some clover, violets, or different texture grasses can add interest to your lawn. Clover has the added benefit of adding nitrogen to your soil, which will help strengthen your grass. There are some very attractive clover mixed with turf grass lawns that have a reduced uh, nitrogen requirement as well, which can be something that's very good for our environment. An easy way to control your weeds is to mow regularly. If weeds are spreading and your lawn is thinning out, it's time to do some weed control. For areas where grass doesn't grow well, consider other alternatives. Weeds are more likely to grow where the conditions are poor, such as along the street, in shade, or where grass is sparse. Try to determine why your grass is not growing well. You may need to improve the conditions through practices like aeration or fertilizing. See videos one and two in this series for more on these practices. When you can't change the conditions, consider alternatives to grass. You can decide to plant something other than grass in that spot, such as native plants, or you can choose to mulch areas where grass won't grow well. Next, try removing weeds without herbicide. 
Pulling weeds is the method of removing weeds that is best for the environment. Pulling weeds is a short-term solution, but it can be effective if you keep up on it. Here are some tips for effectively pulling weeds. Pull weeds when they are small and still growing. Get dandelions before the flowers bloom. When removing weeds, try to get as much of the roots as possible. There are many tools for pulling weeds. Experiment and find out which ones work best for you. If you decide to use herbicide, follow these principles of responsible herbicide use. The first principle is to use herbicides as a last resort. Herbicides are potentially harmful chemicals that may end up in our lakes and rivers, contaminating our waters. They may also end up in our drinking water. At high enough levels, herbicides and other pesticides can be harmful to fish, insects, and other wildlife, such as bees, and can harm other plants. People and pets should avoid contact with herbicides. Herbicides are overused and are often unnecessary. They should be your last resort in dealing with weeds. It's so much safer for the dog now that we pulled the weeds instead of spray them. The second principle is, know your weeds and how to treat them. Different weeds must be treated differently. Most weeds can be divided into four categories. Annual grassy weeds, perennial grassy weeds, annual broadleaf weeds, and perennial broadleaf weeds. Once you understand how a weed grows, you can more effectively treat it. Grassy weeds such as crabgrass and foxtail have long, thin leaves, while broadleaf weeds have wide leaves like flowers, shrubs, and trees. Make sure you read the label on the herbicide. Some herbicides that kill grassy weeds will also kill your grass. Broadleaf plants are not closely related to grass, so you can use a selective herbicide that will not harm your grass as long as you apply it in the proper amount at the right time. However, broadleaf herbicides can kill your trees, shrubs, and flowers too. Be careful how you use them. Annual weeds live for only one year, while perennials live many years. Annual weeds should be treated in the spring or early summer when the plants are young and before they drop their seeds. Perennial weeds should be treated in the fall when the plant's energy is being directed at the roots. Now let's look at the four main types of weeds. With annual grassy weeds such as crabgrass, the best time to control them is in the spring before they emerge from the soil. A pre-emergent product is used, which means you apply it before the plant sprouts. It kills the crabgrass as it's emerging from seed, but won't kill your existing grass. Crabgrass control should be applied about when the lilacs are almost blooming or forsythia is blooming, usually in May. Perennial grasses, such as quackgrass, are trickier to control. The non-selective herbicides that kill them will also kill your lawn. If control is needed, treat them in the fall. You will have to reseed or sod the treated area. Oftentimes we can see some unsightly grasses in our lawns and landscapes as well. This is quack grass. It is very difficult to control in a lawn or landscape. The best option for, for quack grass is to not let it get there in the first place by, by producing basically a healthy dense lawn situation. Annual broadleaf weeds such as prostrate spurge and knotweed should be controlled in early summer, around June, when the plants are young. Perennial broadleaf weeds such as dandelions, broadleaf plantain, and creeping charlie should be controlled in the fall. This is when the plant's energy is directed down to its roots and treating then will provide better long-term control. If you don't know what type of weeds you have, look at the University Extension website or ask at your local garden center. Once you've identified your weeds, read the herbicide labels and make sure you are choosing one that will be effective on the weeds you have. The third principle is use as little herbicide as possible. In most cases, weeds do not cover your whole lawn. They may be along the curb or in a small area. Apply small amounts of herbicide to individual plants or areas of your lawn, just enough to wet them. 
Well, I have dandelions and other weeds around the yard, but not so many that I need to cover the entire yard with herbicides. So instead I like to go around and spot treat uh, the weeds that I'm trying to get rid of with my different handheld devices. Don't treat the entire lawn. Separate fertilizing, which is for the entire yard, and weed control, which is a spot or small area treatment. Never use a weed and feed product. You'll be applying herbicides where they are not needed. The fourth principle is take precautions when handling herbicide. Pesticides, herbicides, they do a great job in controlling weeds, but you want to protect yourself. Herbicides are a type of pesticide and are harmful chemicals. Follow these rules to protect yourself and others, as well as pets and wildlife. Follow the label directions for mixing and using herbicides. Cover all exposed skin. You don't want to go out applying pesticides when you're wearing a t-shirt, shorts, and flip-flops. Wear boots, long sleeves, and long pants, and rubber gloves. Also, look at the pesticide label. It will say specifically if there's additional things you need to wear. Wash your hands after handling any chemicals. Wash your clothes separately after spraying. Never use pop bottles to store herbicides or other pesticides. Someone may confuse them for a soft drink. Keep children and pets off of the lawn for the time specified on the herbicide label. Don't spray on a windy day. Imagine all the unintentional damage that could be done. It's easy to protect yourself, your family and neighbors, and the environment. Follow the label instructions, use universal precautions, and establish safe habits. Controlling your weeds can be overwhelming. If you prefer not to do this yourself, you can hire a certified contractor to do these jobs for you. Visit the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency's website to find a list of certified contractors. These are companies that have staff trained in lawn care with reduced environmental impacts. Contractors that apply pesticides are required by law to be certified by the Department of Agriculture. Make sure they have this certification. Let's review. The best way to control weeds is to grow a thick and healthy stand of grass that doesn't leave room for weeds. Tolerate some weeds. Consider alternatives to grass. For areas where grass doesn't grow well, use mulch, native plants, or other alternatives. Remove weeds without herbicide. Pulling weeds is the least harmful way of removing weeds. Follow the principles of responsible herbicide use. Use herbicides as a last resort. Herbicides are harmful chemicals that can contaminate our waterways and may also get into our drinking water. Know your weeds and how to treat them. Apply herbicide to annual weeds in the spring and perennial weeds in the fall. Use herbicides that target your specific type of weed. Use as little herbicide as possible. Treat individual weeds or small areas of your lawn. Never use a weed and feed product that combines herbicide with fertilizer. Take precautions when handling herbicide. If you prefer not to do this yourself, you can hire a certified contractor to do these jobs for you. Remember, everything you apply ends up somewhere, often in our water. Minimize your use of herbicides and don't apply them where they're not needed. The decisions you make on how to care for your lawn can have a big impact on our water quality. Take time to learn how to properly care for your lawn so that we can have a nice quality lawn and clean water. If you'd like to watch this video again or view the other videos in this series, Lawn Care Basics and Fertilizing Your Lawn, visit mwmo.org. To learn more about native plants, visit www.bluethumb.org. To learn more about identifying weeds, visit www.extension.umn.edu garden. To find a list of contractors certified in lawn care with reduced environmental impacts, 
visit www.pca.state.mn.us slash turfgrass. Thank you.